Hello. In this video, we're going to calculate the accumulated or future value of a decreasing annuity immediate. Recently, we've been looking at increasing annuities immediate. This time, arising from reinvested principal and interest, we will also uh, develop the general formulas for the future and present values of a decreasing annuity immediate of the simplest kind. So we have a thousand that's deposited into fund X. This earns an effective annual interest rate of 6%. At the end of each year, we reinvest the interest. The interest earned plus the additional, an additional 100 is withdrawn, and ultimately it's going to be reinvested in fund Y. They also mentioned that at the end of the 10th year, the fund is depleted, though that's not a big deal. The annual withdrawals of interest and principal are deposited into fund Y, which earns an effective annual rate of 9%. The goal is to determine the accumulated or future value of fund Y at the end of year 10. So we're going to draw a number of timelines in this video. One, first of all, for fund X. Time is going to be in years, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., up through 10 years. The 1,000 is deposited right away at time 0. During that first year, it's going to grow by 6%, so it's going to grow to 1,060. 6% 6 of 1,000 is 60. This is the only amount that's going to be deposited into Fund X. So this is not a deposit amount, this is a new balance. We're going to take the 60 that we earned in interest plus an additional 100 and deposit it into Fund Y. So that's going to be a deposit of 160 at time 1 into Fund Y. So the new balance in Fund X is 900. During that second year, from your time one to time two, it grows by another 6%. It grows to 954. 54 is 6% of 900. Take that interest, 54, plus another 100, deposit it into fund Y at time two. 154 into fund Y at time two. And the new balance in fund X is 800. During the next year, 6% uh, of 800 is 48. This grows to 848. Then the interest of 48 plus another 100 grows into fund Y at time three. 148. Let's just focus on, t on Fund Y now. So for every year that goes by, the amount deposited into Fund Y goes down by 6. It's an arithmetically decreasing sequence. Um, there's 9 years that elapse from time 1 to time 10. 9 times 6 is 54. The final deposit here into Fund Y at time 10 is going to be 106. The second to the last one would be 112. It's the future value of this um, decreasing annuity that we now want to find. It's going to be helpful, since these numbers are not all, all multiples of each other, to break this into two pieces. One is a constant annuity, a level annuity of payments 100, and one that's a decreasing annuity where every uh, one of these things is a multiple of 6. making this second annuity six times the most basic kind of decreasing annuity. And that's going to be helpful. The um, future value is what we're after again. It can again be broken into two pieces. 100 times S10 with interest rate 9% plus 6 times the future value of the most basic kind of decreasing annuity where the payments are n, n minus 2, 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, etc., down to 3 times 2, 3, 2, and 1. Um, the notation for an increasing annuity is i, so a decreasing annuity involves a d. It's a future value, so we use an s instead of an a. Again, it's 10 payments, and the interest rate is 0 0.09. So that's the symbolic form for the answer to the question. Let's go ahead and evaluate what this is here. This would be 1.09 to the 10th power minus 1 divided by 0 0.09. Let's calculate that. 1.09 to the 10th power minus 1 divided by 0 0.09. I actually will need this in calculating this, so I'm going to store this in register 0. I need to also multiply it by 100 here, times 100, 15, 19.29, we'll round to the nearest cent, but I'll go ahead and put a 3 here, 
Now let's go ahead and derive a formula for this. Okay, maybe you know the formula already, but let's derive it from scratch as part of what we do in this video. In the general case, actually, where we have an arbitrary n and an arbitrary i. So the payments, this is an annuity immediate, so the last payment is going to be at time n. We will evaluate the future value immediately after the last payment. The first payment at time 1 is n, then n minus 1, then n minus 2, down to 3, 2, 1 at the end. Let's leave a little space here. The, the uh, future value as a finite series would be this n at time 1 needs to go forward by n minus 1 years, or n minus 1 periods. The n minus 1 at time 2 needs to go forward by n minus 2 periods. Etc. The 2 needs to go forward by 1 period, and the 1 needs to stay where it is. So there is a finite series form for this future value. It's not a geometric series. However, using a trick like we've used recently, we can relate it to a geometric series. Let me multiply everything by 1 plus i and leave a little bit more space here. Well, go further to the left here. I'm going to line up like powers of 1 plus i. This thing times 1 plus i is n times 1 plus i to the n. I need to add the exponents. n minus 1 plus 1 is n then this thing times 1 plus i is going to go above this thing. It's going to be n minus 1 times 1 plus i to the n minus 1. The next term that's here would be n minus 2 times 1 plus i to the n minus 3. Therefore, when I multiply by 1 plus i, I get n minus 2 times 1 plus i to the n minus 2, etc. This times 1 plus i is 2 times 1 plus i squared and then I get a 1 times 1 plus i, just a 1 plus i. Now we can subtract the second thing from the top thing. Um, on the left side, the 1 times ds cancels with this ds, and I'm left with i times ds sub n. And I'm going to ultimately solve for ds by dividing both sides by i. On the right side, it gets some partial cancellation. This n times 1 plus i to the n doesn't cancel with anything. These things cancel, partially. n minus 1 times n is negative 1, so I get minus 1 plus i to the n minus 1. n minus 2 minus n minus 1 is also negative 1, so I get minus 1 plus i to the n minus 2, etc. Keep getting a bunch of minuses. 2 times 1 plus i squared will um, we'll subtract 3 times 1 plus i squared, I'll get a minus 1 plus i squared. This minus this is minus 1 plus i. And finally, subtracting the 1 gives a minus 1. And that doesn't cancel with anything. All right, divide both sides by i. And do a little rearranging. Um, let's see, let's write it as n times 1 plus i to the n minus in parentheses this thing without with plus signs instead of minus signs. And let me go ahead and write it in the opposite order. 1 plus 1 plus i plus 1 plus i squared, etc. The last one will be plus 1 plus i to the n minus 1 coming from that term right there. We're almost done. This thing right there you should recognize as being Sn. Okay, same thing as that. Um, SNI, I guess I can write, put some I's in here. That's the future value of an annuity immediate, whereas you write a level, level payment of one. It's evaluated immediately after the last payment, which would be just represent this one here. So we've got our formula for DSN. It's N times one plus I to the N minus SN. I won't bother with the I that time, divided by I. If we want the formula for the present value of such an, a decreasing annuity immediate, we can discount this back in time to time zero by multiplying by v to the n. 
The symbol for that would be da n. If I multiply this by b to the n, I just get an n. Multiply this by b to the n, I get a n, and the i stays the way it is. So there you have your second equation that I want to derive in this video for the present value of such a decreasing annuity immediate. We also have this formula. This is the one we're going to need that I'm circling in red here. So now we go back up to solving the problem. Um, let's go ahead and down here calculate 6ds10.09 with this formula right there. That's going to be 10 times 1.09 to the tenth minus the SN that we found up here that was stored in register 0. I think, it, yeah, it was about, it was 15.19. I'll just write it as S10.09. Divide by I, which is 0 0.09. Let's use the calculator now. So again, let's see, we have 1.09, looking right here, to the tenth. But now times 10. Subtract what was in register 0, minus, recall, 0. Divide by 0 0.09. And don't forget to multiply it by 6, like I almost forgot. Multiply by 6. You get 565.380. It's going to go back up here, plus 565.380. Add those two things and you get the final answer. Oops, okay, final answer is 2084.67. And that is correct. So, kind of complicated, I made it more complicated by adding the derivations, but I think that's important.